That's fucking delightful. Fucking delightful. Fucking good combination playing. Sliding balls into space. Good. Excellent. You have on the fucking road. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Rover Report podcast. My name is Anthony Waterson. We are once again joined in the Hilton Hotel, wonderful surroundings. We are also once again sponsored by the Sunderland Community Soup Kitchen and I am joined by Phil West. How are we doing, Phil? Yeah, yeah, very well, thank you very much. Spot on, and also Sam Blakey, first time in about two years I've seen you. Good to see you again. I know, it's been a while. No, very good after that. You kind of complain, top of the league, four home wins out of four, and pints. There you go. There we go. There we go. And also we're joined by his first appearance for about three and a half years is my cousin Jack Avery. Jack, how are we going? Yeah, very good, very good. More than happy after that result. Excellent. So, yep, Sunderland have won 2 1 against Accrington. Uh, we took the lead through Dan Neal uh, with a really, really good strike. Accrington then equalised through a corner, um, but Sunderland managed to get the three points with a wonderful team goal by Carl Winchester finished off. Really, really cool finish. Uh, Phil, go to you first. Happy after that? Oh, very happy. I thought they played really, really well. It was high octane stuff. Um, you know, we were too open at times at the back, but we played some really good football going forward. And Dan Neon, just fantastic. Really good performance. What a player he's turning into for us. I mean, Sam, what a goal that is. Uh, what a way to mark your first goal for Sunderland. Lovely left foot, jinked it onto his left foot, curled it right in the corner. Beautiful. He's class. And he, I think it sums him up that I'm now, I'm now not praising him. I'm thinking we need to get him on a new contract because if if we don't go up this season there's not many midfielders in the league of Wolves that can do what he can do at 19 as well but the, the thing about Dan Neal is, is he's a proper local lad I don't know if you saw but um, when Winchester scored Dan Neal ran behind the goal and he was just smocking his badge to the crowd and it's class seeing the local lads come through but what a talent he is unbelievable one of the most exciting centre midfielders I've seen for a long long time man. It, it's Min Jack seeing him and Emelton just thriving at the minute, isn't it? Two local lads probably should have been playing last season, but they just took the time with them. I mean, this season they're both absolutely thriving, aren't they? I mean, that, that was a great goal and a great performance all the way through. Yeah, I think they've both been really good in pretty much every game we've, we've played so far. Um, I think what's really good about them both is that they're both very good technical players. You can give them the ball anywhere on the pitch under any kind of pressure and they can play one touch, two touch. They're both two footed, as you've seen with M. M. Button's goal against Wickham. Neil's goal to Dea taking on his left foot. Um, it's just really good to see them, like what you see, thriving. Hindsight, they should have been playing last season because like, they're in a different world for me compared to the likes of Power and Scourin when you see them knocking it about in the middle of the park. Fantastic from them both again today. Yep, certainly. Um, obviously, Atkinson failed. Came, came back into the game, scored an equaliser through a corner. Not, not a lot of people have just been talking to us all saying Hoffman should have done better, but I thought it was a nice header to be honest. Yeah, it was a good header. He got a good run on whoever was supposed to be marking him. Um, I just felt that we were a bit nervous from set pieces all day, and I think that obviously Hoffman made his debut in goal. A very mixed debut. I felt he, you know, he looked up for it. He looked lively. He was buzzing around, but there were times when he looked a bit shaky as well. Um, but yeah, I just think defensively we were a little bit shaky today. Um, but yeah, that can happen. You know, we were good going forward, a bit more open at the back, but it's a bit of a trade off. But I think on balance, I'd rather take good going forward personally. Oh, certainly. I mean, I thought he was mad today, but that, he's young. It's his first game in front of 40 odd thousand fans. He's going to be like that. I think I think he'll, he'll calm down, to be honest. I think he'll calm down. Um, so yeah, into the second half. And again, I thought Sunderland were on top. and. What a great team goal that was, Sam. I mean, like Aidan McGeady doing so well. Winchester bombing forward, calm finish from a right back. I mean, he saved us. How much? He saved us a lot of money, like going out and trying to buy a right back. But his performances today and all season have been fantastic. Man. He's thriving, isn't he? I think if we'd signed Winchester to play right back, we'd all be standing here saying, "What a signing yep. we've made!" Because he's, he's like to get to get man of the match or to be in with the question of man of the match from full backs quite a hard doing but he's up there all the time he, he, he struck he struck a really good shot in the first half that just faced past the post uh, but no he's like you know when 09 first moved into right back and he had a bit of a goal threat like he was in the, the back post he was running through that's what it looks like so no, I'm, I'm pleased for Winchester as well because I, I think he's one of the players that can thrive under the crowd he seems to like when uh, against um was it Wimbledon when he scored? Yeah, yeah, Wimbledon. I, yeah. He only really shot because we screamed shoot. I think he's like, I think he's enjoying himself. But I think I agree with Phil and the, the defence was a bit shaky. But um, I never, 
I personally never thought I'd see Tom Flanagan doing a Christ turn on the edge of his own box. <laughs> so I think that shows how far we've come this season as a back four, and I think they're all keeping the place, so it's good. It's really good to see, to be fair. I mean, I can see Phil's point about the defence being shaky. I mean, Jack obviously has done this every every game so far I've seen anyway, but do you think that was why Bailey Wright came on at the end? Because it did seem to invite a lot of pressure and we, we kind of lost a little bit of momentum, but was that down to coming forward at us all the time or was that just basically because he, he likes doing it? I'm, I'm not sure on it, mate. I, I think he is obviously a big fan of it because, like I say, every game that I've been to this season, every time I've been in a winning position, seems to make that change at exactly the same minute, sort of every game. Um, and he, he can justify it because it, it has not worked yet. It's worked every single time. We have held on to the points every single time. Um, I'm not a huge fan of it personally. I do think sooner rather than later it might come to sort of bite us on the backside because Accrington pinned us back the day in added time and sort of when Wright came on because we just go, we just drop deeper and deeper. But I can understand why he gets his experience on, especially when Doyle's 17. But I just think kind of sometimes trust the players you've got out there. They're doing all right. They only conceded from a set piece today, so yeah. But he can justify it because it has worked every single game he's done it but sooner rather than later I do think that that may bite us on the backside doing it every game you're asking for them to attack you when yeah, you do I that I think they pinned us in I think yeah. like you say we're top of the league you know what I mean he's, he's earned our trust to trust him as a manager and I, look I, I trust him with him but my dad was exactly the same when he saw Bailey Wright coming on he was saying we've got, now we've got 10 minutes of them looking balls but I think it's a brave call from Johnson because like you say Eventually, if he does that every game, chances are our team will score, and then it'll, the whole conversation will be he was asking for it. But I, I do think it, I think Doyle has something to do with it. Like I think it's to do with Doyle. Yeah. I think it's maybe his inexperience at times and I trying agree. to get a more experienced player on next to him. But like you wouldn't really see it from Doyle because again I thought he was excellent today. But I do think that comes into his thinking to think like oh last sort of ten minutes there's one goal in it and we've got a 17 year old playing centre half. Yeah, like yeah, managed, isn't it really? That's what you've got. You know, because I, I think Doyle often looks like the senior partner in defence. You know, he looks he looks like a real leader. But I just think as, as the lads were saying there, you, the last ten minutes you defend the two one lead. Do you stick or do you twist type of thing? And we did drop deep and deep, and we were get, again a bit edgy, but. That'll come, you know, as he said, that'll come with experience. You know, we've just got to learn how to close these games out when it's tight. The opposition are coming for us, we've just got to learn how to close them out. But yeah, that'll come. It is. I don't think I'd be against it if maybe, I know it sounds maybe it's a bit silly to see it, but maybe if we went like a 5 3 2, but we just go 5 4 1. Like, maybe if we had another outlet next to Stewart to like stretch the game a little bit when we, when we do that and go 5 at the back, I may not be so against it when I first see it. But it's just the fact that we go 5 4 1 and slippery like right, hit Stewart, and then we'll try and get out. Maybe if we have somebody next to Stewart, like stretch the pitch a little bit more, then but it is working because like we haven't conceded yet while we've done it. So, I mean, we've got a staff for Chris Wind. I mean, and our Chris loves his stats. It's the first time Sunderland have won the first four home league games of the season since 1975. So, I mean, for that, Phil. Momentum in it. I mean, we're trying to make this. It's building, it's, it's building and building and building. And we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves because it will kick you in the backside if you do. But there is something different about this team. It's got youth. It's got dynamism. It's got creativity. It's got solidity at the back generally as well. And now it's got a goalkeeper who I think will become a really commanding figure once he calms down, settles in. So yeah, I think you're right. We are building momentum, but it's hard not to get too excited because things are going so well for us. But again. Don't get too far ahead of yourself. Long season ahead, but ride the wave. That's what we're doing at the moment. Yeah, I mean, Sam, I mean, I mean you were quite excitable chaps. Let's get excited. I mean, it's, it's, it's very good football at the minute, isn't it? I mean, we're carving teams up as well. We should have been probably out of sight by half time. You know, two or three chances. I mean, Ross Stewart's gone one on one in the second half, probably should score. I think a couple in the first half, given the right kind of composure we score you know Gooch had a couple of chances so it is right I think Phil brings a good point it's, it's hard not to get carried away isn't it because of how good the football is at the minute but it, it's not even that it's you, saw, you hear the, the, the cries of we're top of the league and you've got people like me dad because he's only ever seen Phil you say no it's too early but we haven't been top of the league that's no. mental let us let us get without, without getting too whatever we've had COVID we haven't been at the stadium we've been back we've played four games played teams off the park even the game we got beat against Burton was 
arguably one of our best performances of the season. On another day, we scored two in the first half, and we, that game's three or four nil. But like Phil says, it, it's just a different feeling. Yeah. Without getting carried away, whatever, we could look back and see it fell apart. While it's while we're top of the league and while we're playing like this, let's just enjoy it. Jack, it's not as if we've played mugs so far either. I mean, obviously Wigan, who are now second in the league, played them, beat them. I thought Wimbledon wrecked it when they came up here, and Wimbledon are on a, a little bit of a good run. Wickham, who hadn't lost, and then Abington, who were, who were second, joined top with us. So it's not as if we're playing mugs either. Yeah. I mean, we're looking confident, and you know, we've won games relatively comfortably as well. I mean, the last two home games have been like two to top of the table clashes, first v second, like on consecutive home games. And for me, like we've made them both look quite ordinary, like at times, and like both teams have like come to the stadium, like obviously two weeks ago when Wickham came, Abington came to day, full of momentum, full of confidence and like I do think we've made them look very, very ordinary and like what the lads are saying, like it is hard not to get carried away because it's a Sunderland team that you can really get behind, like you can sense that thing building because of the way they play, because they play exciting football, because they're a high pressing side and they want to work and like the team last season was probably helped by the fact that there was, wasn't fans in the ground because there was a lot of people really who he didn't really trust um, because of times when they let us down in the past but these lads are sort of building the fans trust back up by the way that they're playing and I think that's why people are getting as excited as what they are because I, like what the lad said it does feel different with this side and the individuals like within us. Phil, I thought as well today, Barry probably should have scored. Ross Stewart today, absolutely amazing. Oh, he was a menace. He was, I, 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 was, I was, hope we would mention this actually. That is how we lead the line in this division. Top class. Physical, good on the deck, great in the air. He held the ball the brilliant. He brought others into play. Should have scored. Bit more composure when he does score. That's the game done and dusted. He is going to be a top striker for us this season. He's getting better all the time. And I'll never criticise White, but he's a, Stewart is a better all round striker. Yeah. He's got more to his game. He's a more rounded player and he is going to be fantastic for us this season. Top performance today, really good. Talk about a couple of negatives, Sam, if you don't mind. We'll, we'll try and make it as positive as we can, but one one, a little, uh, one negative for me is Luke 09 went down twice in the first half. Obviously, look as if his shoulders popped out a couple of times. He's taken the batterings. I mean, he's took the right batter in the day. Now that Corey Evans is back, do you bite the bullet with him and try and make him get an operation or do you kind of ride it out because it's... It's coming to a point now where they're going to have to stick or twist with him, I think. I know what you're saying, and ultimately it's up to maybe all nine to be a bit honest, which yeah. obviously I don't know him personally, but you'd think he'd just want to play regardless. But we are not short in centre midfield, but if, if say, we lost all nine for the season or the remainder of the season, we've seen that Corby Evans could pick up a knock. We'd have then Dan Neal, and I feel like next to Dan Neal, you and Daniel you've got someone who's going to turn on the ball spin you need just someone who's going to be everywhere picking up second balls and that's what 0-9 and Corey Evans are so hopefully 0-9's alright but I don't think if it was announced that he was having his injury I'd trust in Corey Evans and I would also trust in Lee Johnson and the team that they've made the right decision but I do know what you're saying because I know it's from Holdley's shoulder um, I think it was in the second half but he does tend to get clattered a bit but um, no, I, I, I would trust the judgment of the team. I think while we're top of the league, you've got to put trust in everyone involved, haven't you? I think for his long-term health, I'll personally yeah, no. say, you know, just go and get it sorted, come back and yeah. be better. Because it, it, for him as well, though, it's going to be something. If he keeps it as long as he's trying to, like, oh, I'll get through game by game by game, yeah. it's going to end up being it's it's going to be strategy in the end nine months, isn't it? You fast forward to December when we're playing on crap pitches yeah. every yeah. three nights. Better as well. Do you know what I mean? He's in centre midfield, it's not like he's playing in a position where he's not going to get waxed. He's probably going to get waxed four or five times a game, so I know what, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Last negative, I promise, Jack. Wingers as well today. Gooch, I thought, was poor. Nagini in and out. Are there positions now under threat from obviously Broadhead, Pritchard, you know, Diablo when he comes in who didn't make the 18? I mean, today was a big chance for them to prove that they're undroppable. And for me, the ball failed. Yeah, I mean, obviously they lined up on different sides today, like pretty much throughout the game, which they've obviously looked at that written Stanley and tried to identify a weakness. That's why they've swapped sides. I, I think with them playing sort of three at the back with the wing backs, they obviously highlighted a weakness and there was a reason behind them. But yeah, I, I thought they were quiet again. McGeady doesn't seem as exciting as what he has been in the past. 
but it's good that we're doing things without McGeady as well. It's not as though like like we're, we're failing or like we're not a good aside when McGeady doesn't play well. Um, but yeah, I think I think moving forward, if we can get the two lads playing in those positions into the game, creating more chances, being a little bit more exciting, a little bit more direct, then we're going to create more chances and we're already creating a lot. So I think Pritchard came on, done well. I think he has to be knocking on the door now. He's obviously fit to get in. Um, and then they've obviously got Dejarco as well, who I don't know if he was injured or anything, didn't make the match to your squad or if he's just not up to speed, but he's obviously come with a little bit of a reputation and obviously quite excited about him. So it's healthy competition, isn't it? Like I think the two lads both have to look over their shoulder and say that there's going to be people chopping at the bit to take their place if, uh, if they don't start producing sooner rather than later, really. Yeah, I mean, the main talking point, I think, about the starting line, it was obviously Hoffman and goal. Phil, obviously, we've mentioned this in our WhatsApp group. I thought he was keen, yeah. which was, it, it could be a good thing, it could be a bad thing. Didn't cost us a ball, but yeah. coming out for crosses, I expect him in, you know, in a few more games' time. Once yeah. he gets used to his defence, he should be all right, but it was a little bit frightened, a little yeah. bit nervy, wasn't I, it? I think in terms of his enthusiasm, it kind of reminded me of Jordan Pickford. It was kind of like, yeah, yeah I'm going to make an impression, I'm going to show you how good I can be, when sometimes it's just better to do the simple things, basics of your game. But again, I understand that he's making his debut, it's a big crowd, it's an enthusiastic crowd, he wants to make an impression. So again, just let him settle in, let him calm down. There was enough good things in there today, I thought, to persist with him, obviously he's going to stick with him. Um, and I think he'll be that, hopefully he can be the final piece in that jigsaw, and he needs to get the understanding with his defenders as well. And again, that'll only come the more they play together. Yeah. What do you think of him, Sam? Are you impressed or just a bit nervy with him? No, I agree with everything Phil said. I thought the good thing is, I know he, his decision making maybe is a bit hit and miss but from what we saw today, but the raw materials are there because there was a few crosses that were fizzed across that he just he kept hold of. So he, he's obviously got talent. So I think Phil's right. Maybe maybe in a way game will do him the world of good where he can just concentrate on being a solid keeper. And, but I think it's a big compliment to him that he was straight in the team. Because for a young lad, especially in a position like a goalkeeper, to be chucked straight in is it, it speaks volumes really so I think the fact he's got the baton from his manager the crowd are behind him he's a young lad and we're top of the league he'll, exactly. he'll, he'll grow into it won't he yeah. I, I don't mean to keep saying we're top of the league but See I'm going to keep saying it uh-huh. until we're not uh, we're top of the league uh, uh, Jack has um, mentioned two or three times there we're top of the league Fleetwood away next week again it's a difficult game for, for us we we're, we're, we're never normally go down there too much but I don't particularly fear Fleetwood and do you, want, do you want more of the same, you know, trying to attack Fleetwood from the start again? Yeah, I don't think there's any reason we can't go down there and be positive and, and play our own game, obviously, and look at it and, and see what their strengths are. But obviously it's early in the season, but they are where they are in the league for a reason. Obviously they've had a good result today away at Rotherham, but I, I, like I said before the game, uh, obviously in, in the in the colliery, I, if we play well and we create the amount of chances that we do, I, I, I don't think there's anybody really to fear. At the moment. Obviously, me and Gav talked about this on, on our spaces last week, uh, last night, sorry. And the big talking point, I think, this week for Sunderland is Denry Hume coming back. I want to get all three of your opinions on it because it has divided opinion in the Sunderland uh, fan, kind of, <laughs> the whole Sunderland fans. It seems that it's, it's probably divided opinion. I mean, I'm all for it, to be honest, because it brings competition of a good League One player into the squad. So I think Denry Hume will get in majority of of the sides in League One yeah. and it also keeps Dan Neal in the midfield so yeah. it stops us from moving him about so Phil we'll start with you what's your opinion on the whole kind of well I won't sit on the fence I think it's absolutely fantastic that he's decided to recommit you know the, the situation was messy it was drawn out and it wasn't ideal it, it kind of hung over the club and as I said last week I, I felt he was misguided he was a bit naive but a fully fit Denver Hume is an asset to the team and he give, as you said he gives us options at the back as well so I think it's a massive positive that he stayed it, make, it means that we're not going to be stretching the squad too thinly as well and I think he deserves another chance and he won't have to win me over can't speak for anyone else but I'll be giving him as much backing as I can this season I mean I thought Serkin was good to dear Sam but obviously if Serkin gets injured you can kind of trust him Denver Hume come and make and make an, an impact can't you you know it's not as if it's a new Simon nothing about we know Denver Hume is a talented player so oh, I think it's nothing but positive I mean we talk about the Wigan at home and our only left back, I'm saying left back with quotation marks, was Dan Neal. Fast forward four weeks, five weeks, we've now got Serkin from Tottenham 
and Denver Hume, who we all know is a good enough left back for this league, fighting for a place. I think it's. I think like what Phil said, it, it was drawn out, and for some reason it was made very public. Whereas I honestly think these things probably happen all the time. He's a young lad. He's got decent potential. No one knows his growth. Is it the worst thing in the world if he's held out to see what can happen? At the end of the day, he, he's signed now when he knows that he's probably not first choice left back. Yeah. So I think it's, it's nothing but a positive, really. Do you expect to see him sooner rather than later in the squad, Jack? Or do you think it will be, you know, as and when? Um, well, for me, I think, he, I think he has to be second choice left back at the moment because I think from what I've seen of it. Uh, Kirchen, I think Kirchen probably is a better defender. Maybe Hume's better at going forward, but for me, I, I would have Kirchen in over Hume. Um, it depends. It depends on sort of people's fitness because obviously there was three defenders on the bench today. Um, obviously, you would like to get Dejarte in the squad somewhere, so I'm not really sure how many defenders you can fit onto the bench. But it's healthy competition again, isn't it? Like you look across the squad, like there was a time in the summer where. Sort of everybody was panicked about like the lack of depth, but now you look at the squad and there's there's two competent players for pretty much every position. Maybe it's apart from centre forward if if Stewart got injured. Um, but yeah, the, it, he'll be in, he'll be in and around it. But for me, I, he has a lot of work to do to, to get himself back first choice. Yeah, yeah. Quick man of the match from all three of us in for all start here. I'd have to go with Dan Neil. I thought he was Dan absolutely Neil. fantastic. Yeah, I thought he was. He just, again, he just, it just it staggers me that there were some people last season saying, oh, he might not be good enough, he needs a loan, but like any of them, but no, 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 this lad is class, and he's going to be one of the main, you know, kind of um, players for us this season without any shadow doubt, and God help, we've got to get him tight when he contract as soon as we possibly can, because he is top notch. Totally agree, yeah. totally agree that we need to sign him down, Sam. Yeah, I'm not going to argue with Dan Neil, I thought he was incredible. Um, Honourable mentions to Winchester and Ross Stewart. It was, I think if Stewart scores that chance, I think I'm giving him man of the match. So that's a bit harsh, but I know we're touching on him earlier, but for a big, albeit lanky lad, the skill and touch he has is incredible. So I'll, I'll back Dan Neil, because what a goal. We've got two goals to Dan Neil, Jack. I know you've mentioned yours to me, so I'll be uh, I'm going to go a little bit different. I love Dan Neil, obviously being a local lad, and he is playing very well, but I'm going to go for Carl Winchester and... Sometimes I get a little bit annoyed when people just give it to the lad who got the winning goal, but I just think like he slotted into right back so well and like none of us expect him to be able to play it that well. I just think he knows when to get forward, he knows what to do when he gets forward, he's composed on the ball. He's finished today 1v1 one one for the goalkeeper for a lad who hasn't scored many goals, who was playing right back today, he's just so composed. He passes forward into midfield areas, he knows where to put them. Um, and he can defend as well and he can defend with calmness so yeah I'm going to go with Carl Winchester I am afraid that's we're going to be 2-2 uh, because mine's Carl Winchester okay. yeah I thought he, again pretty much everything what Jack said I thought he was absolutely outstanding and you look at the chances we've missed probably easier chances than that one he scored and the amount of the composure it took he knew, it was, he, knew he was going to score already yeah. I, I trusted Winchester to score that yeah, it was a lovely finish, finish you know and um, a great, like I say a great three points we're top of the league again we're going to have a great weekend, you know. Um, thanks to Phil, thanks to Sam, thanks to Jack for, jo for joining in. Um, obviously, we'll be back tomorrow with um, Gav, Chris and Martin, I think. Hopefully, they'll be a bit more sober than what I am. The throat's a little bit better than what mine is. Um, and obviously, best of the Sunday ladies tomorrow against Crystal Palace. Hard game, but I think they'll win. And we'll see you all tomorrow and on Monday on Twitter Spaces. Thank you very much, everybody. Take care. Have a great evening. Good night. Thank you. Where am I going? I don't know. Where am I hidden? I'm searching all and always I am on.